Hey everyone, this is Steve uh, with Collider and we are here at our Sundance studio. Uh, I want to give a huge thank you to Filmio. Uh, they are our Sundance sponsor and I'm sincerely grateful. It really costs a lot of money to be here and to put on a studio to champion indie films. I'm really grateful to them for being our partner and um, film.io is where you can go to get more information about them, but they're shattering the barriers for people to greenlight films uh, by putting the, the, the creation in the hands of creators and fans. Uh, you can learn a lot about them by going to the website, but I'm really sincerely grateful because, yeah, you could, you know. Anyway, jumping in, uh, I am here with the lovely folks behind Thelma, and uh, this is one of my favorite films that I saw so far at the fest. I just want to say congrats to you guys for such a well done job. Um, so I have to, I have to start with you, June. Um, this is your, you've been acting, I believe, for seven decades, and I believe this is your first starring role. And I just want to know, what does it mean to you to be the lead in this film and to have it be like such a good movie? You know what I mean? Everything about it. It's exciting. It's wonderful. And, and it's funny because I never think of it like a leading role. I mean, I, I choose my roles from the script and what the role is. And I've had some wonderful supporting roles. So it, it's it's just a great role. I don't know who wants to say it, but everyone watching this interview will not have seen the movie yet. So who wants to bite the bullet and say how they've been describing it to friends and family? In terms of the plot? Yeah, or? like the, the, the loose, yeah. what it's about. You do it. You, oh, no, I don't, <laughs> can't do it. Okay, so... Uh, you, why? Why me? Um, okay. Um, thanks, Io. Um, June uh, plays Thelma, and um, Fred plays her grandson, my son, and Parker Posey's son, and they're very close. And and Fred helps Danny <laughs> helps her with her tech issues sometimes as the world evolves very quickly for some of us in the older generations. And then um, she gets a call. A that Fred, I'm just going to have problems, that Danny's been in this terrible accident and he's hit a pregnant lady and that he's in jail and he's going to go into the system if she doesn't get $10,000 cash to this lawyer very quickly. And she can't reach anybody. She can't reach me. She can't reach um, Parker. <laughs> and so she uh, sends off this cash that she's gathered from all around her house. And when we all gather, we realize it's been a scam. And there's a fair amount of... Um, <laughs> parental abuse to to Danny for being asleep still at 10:30 in the morning um cuz that's a whole subplot of a failure to launch thing and um but when we start to have this conversation about maybe she's not really able to live alone anymore and she can't take care of herself anymore for my money it awakens a beast it awakens <laughs> an unlikely action star and she decides to go get her money back yeah, this this really is like a, a it's your act it's a it's really your action movie, and um, when you saw the script, if you, like there's a few scenes where um, I think you're being asked to go on the like you're being asked to move a little bit. I did it exactly, and so I wanted to know like was were you nervous about doing your own stunts? No, a la Tom I loved Cruise? it. I I pushed it. You might say. Really? Yeah. No, I. I, I've always been physical. I danced for years. And so, I mean, you know, I felt I could still use my body, and uh, I did. And then driving the scooter, that was great fun. That was great fun. One, one of the things about the film is you got to have some clips of Tom Cruise, and yeah. Tom Cruise is a, is a plot point. Um, and I really was like, I can't, June, this is June's Tom Cruise movie. <laughs> it this is, is. This is her yes. Mission Impossible. Yeah. You know? It is. Yeah. And they they you know they gave us the okay to use the clips. Oh. So they were thr they were they liked the idea too. Tom has been reaching out about being involved in the sequel. <laughs> yes. But, listen, you can't, you can't go wrong when you have Tom running in a movie. So this yeah. is just another film he's running in. Yeah. You know? Um, but one of the things is you guys have some great scenes together. And yeah. especially, like, I love the way you're trying to explain in the beginning of the film what how to use the computer. Uh, and I've had that exact conversation with some of my older relatives. So can you sort of talk about, like, just getting to work together, those scenes, and how much fun you were having. Okay, it was very um, natural. We 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 met beforehand, um, and I got to come over to your place and hang, and we started reading the script together. And um, you know, 
when a script is this great, you you kind of uh, you, you every scene is pretty special, and so I, I definitely had that feeling um, where we just enjoyed running through all of them, and then every time, you know, it was the day to do it, it would be it's exciting, but then you're also like, oh, I really love that scene, and now it's I'd like to do it. You know, you just you really enjoy it, and so we had a really good time um, there and 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 since. Um, I did want to say though to the to the other question, the earlier one about like how you know what is the the, the other idea behind the movie because uh, you know our director Josh Margolin, um, writer director and editor, uh, his real grandmother Thelma Post, who's a hundred and three years old, um, is the basis for June's character, and I'm s- sort of the basis for Josh's, um, and. Uh, his his real grandmother was almost the victim of a phone scam similar to like like this, and so he sort of imagined if she was, what would she, what would she do? And uh, in his experience, and my experience, and all of our experiences, um, a lot of times the most heroic and powerful people do not get depicted on film very much, and uh, I think it's very true of Josh's real grandmother. It's very true of June herself um that 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 if someone messed with you in that way you'd be determined to figure out how to get your money back and how to right that wrong and um and so that that was the other kind of jumping off point was was what is what does that actually look like what is what is action in all of its fragility in all of its commitment in all of its messiness actually look like on screen well, one of the other things I think that resonates with people as they're watching is that it is what what you're depicting in this movie is happening to so many people. And it's a very, you know, it, it, it's a this is very much happening to people who don't, you know what I mean, um, uh, being scammed online, on the phone, text messaging. I'm not sure about you guys, but I get texts all the time with like I get texts and, text and emails all the time. Yeah, with people looking, yeah. I mean, they're just trying to scam you. It's you know, it, and I think that's why it resonates so much. I mean, I I'm a computer person. I've been doing this since the Max first came out. I consider myself fairly savvy, and I get some. Sometimes I have to reach out to a tech a tech advisor or somebody. This can this also be fake? And it was a yep. lot of yeah. times. Yeah, it, it's really uh, that no matter what you do or how you basically, they're always going to try to one up you. You know, the scammers. But anyway, um, when you guys were thinking about the shoot uh, or what, when you looked at the schedule, um, especially for you, what, what was the day you had circled that you were either really excited to film something or very nervous to film something? Both. The, uh, the, the uh, cemetery scene with Fred. I, I love that scene and I loved it when I read the script. And it, it just sort of said to me, this is who this woman is, you know, what she's saying. And the fact that after all she'd been through, she wanted to go to the cemetery and put some flowers on her husband's grave. And uh, I, 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 you know, it's funny because as an actor, you think, oh boy, I can't wait to get into that scene. But you also think, oh, can I do it? You know, is it something that I understand enough to really do? And that's me with everything, though. So, you know, every scene is kind of that way. But that that was a wonderful scene. I'm curious for all three of you. Oh, sorry. I just want to say I agree. And I, I think sometimes a great script has what I would almost call like a rudder scene. It's like in times of doubt, you kind of keep rereading that scene and come back to it a bit. And I yeah. felt the exact same way um, where I would reread that scene when we were doing other scenes sometimes. And it would it would speak to something that was, was churning so underneath the whole smart. part of it. it yeah, a smart scene. It was wonderful. I'm a fan of all three of you and, and your work on screen. And I'm just curious, say this is a hypothetical question. Say you have a big scene on a Monday, something that you know is emotional or dramatic, or you know you're going to have to pull something out of yourself for. How early on are you actually prepping for that scene? Are you doing it when you first get the script and sort of examining how you want to play it? Or is it like especially the la- the few days leading up to that day that you're really in your head about it? Well, I think I do it from the beginning with the script, with, when you first get the script. And uh, I, I learn by over, over, over. And um, I, I get the script that way. And I think that, 
I, I never, except for something like the cemetery scene, which was so precise, and so this is what he wants out of it. Um, I think most of the time it all comes that way, but it's at the beginning. I mean, I don't think you can wait until the night before and and expect to understand it that well. I feel like uh, it's so dependent on the material, mm -hmm. and a lot of times there'll be something in a script that just starts to live in you, and from the minute you read it, especially if it's something you're going to do, it's I never stop. I wouldn't say thinking about it, but it have it have dreams about it. I've even gone, I love that Los Angeles, this brilliant woman who helps you work with yeah. dreams and kind of asking your dreams, what what what's getting to me about this? And sometimes you get a dream that gives you some insight and connects you on a deeper level to it. Okay, I sound crazy. Um but for, but for me, um the other part of it is sometimes there's a script where it'll just say he's emotional or he's crying and you're kind of like why what why from this scene what I, I i must not understand this but then what josh wrote is so it's so gentle and so human and it's not trying to make you love it it's not trying to get emotions out of you it's just telling a story in a very human way and in those you're kind of like i'm and I not think about this too much and I'm going to show up on the day and I'm going to, I know that the scene has what I need in it. Um, but again, I, I just think that what Josh wrote, one of, it's been one of the things that's really lovely about Sundance that I don't hear a lot is we do a thing alone in a room or in a car or, you know, and everyone has to be quiet and you don't feel it connecting with anybody but each other. Luckily, Josh did a thing where we had a little, not even a couple hours just reading through some scenes with our family. Yeah. And it did so much to create a family dynamic. And Parker brings so much to that. Her, her amazing background with all the Chris Guest movies and the way that she can kind of make stuff just feel like it's happening for the first time every time. And to come here and not to not know really how an audience is going to react to it. It didn't feel to me immediately like a lot of Sundance movies are super dark and moody and edgy. And this has some of that, but it's different. And just the humanity of it, to get to sit in an audience and feel people connecting to it or dealing with the life stuff that goes on here it has been really moving for me. You care about something for so long. You know, a group of people come together and you're the only people in the world that care about that thing, that story. And it's and it's a it's a bizarre process because because you're in this world and like you know we're all bringing our dreams to it our lives talking about our experiences that's part of what you, you know when you're asking about that preparation we're all together sharing that and you just keep pushing it pushing it up the hill as much as you can and if you're lucky it's finished and la uh, two nights ago was the first time that you can a little bit if you're lucky again watch other people start to care about this thing that um you know you never you never thought that far ahead that that that, that, that other people would so it's 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 an amazing feeling especially you know, at a i festival. think we're all very naive and i love it <laughs> <laughs> you things we're saying. i know i always get <laughs> lost in it <laughs> i might have asked you this at tiff and but i've not asked you to this question uh if someone you you hold on you went to tiff yeah with this no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> yeah i did a solo i did a solo tiff run without you guys a covert secret tiff anything run. fred does without me i'm a little bit like what do you mean dude i was free uh you you guys have great resumes and i'm curious and you can answer this again but if someone has never seen anything you've done before outside of thelma what is the because you can easily say thelma and it's fantastic uh what would you recommend they watch first and why Yeah, uh, Nebraska. <laughs> that was again a joy to make, and the people involved, and uh, it, it was just a wonderful experience. And then we went through the whole award season together, so we had about three years together in all. <laughs> Fantastic film! If you've never seen Nebraska, guys, strong recommendation. Yeah, oh, fantastic. I w I I'm gonna answer this in a sec, but um, I I love all of June's movies I've seen, but I wish I had a, t a, t a time machine because I also wish I could have, when we were going through all the pictures, I wish I could have seen the, the old plays and the musicals too. Oh. 
Those are the things. Those are the things I'm always kicking myself because when it's something that's you know doesn't exist on film, you're like, oh my gosh, if only I was there. Um, let me see. Well, uh, I did a, sh- a short film called David um, that I'm deeply proud of. Um, okay, because I'm at Sundance. The first thing I came here was a, with was a movie called The Adventures of Sebastian Cole. And I played uh, an ex-Marine who was very clumsily trying to transition in late 90s, um, late 90s upstate New York. And it was a first feature by this wonderful guy, Kip Ward. And I don't know, I just, except for how badly I walked in the heels, I really, I'm proud of that movie. What is the most nervous you've been the night before the first day of filming something? My first film. <laughs> it scared me to death. I, I, you know, I'd worked so much on stage, but I'd never done film. And I was doing Woody Allen's Alice. And he was wonderful, wonderful to me. And it was a great experience. But boy, was I scared before I ever walked onto that set. And I mean, this woman has a resume on yeah, Broadway that's yeah. Titanic. Yeah, I know. But you step into the different medium and it's terrifying because it's, like it's completely child. different. Yeah. Is it is it one of those things where where the night before you're just not sleeping? Are you that much in your head, or are you- yeah? I mean, you know, you, you're thinking about it so much, and it's so important to you, and uh, you have no. I had no idea what to do. It was so because I could still remember that all of the crew were trying to keep me away from the cables. I didn't know about cables backstage <laughs> getting to the set. And they were all, and I, I felt like if they could have, they would have carried me in just to get me away from all the cables. I, found, I remember, I found the lingo so confusing because um, there's that turn of phrase that they say on set where they, you know, setting up, they're rehearsing a scene and they say, and we'll, we'll figure this shot, this part out of the camera on the day, they say, on the day. And I remember doing a scene and being like, I thought what we day? were doing this scene today. Like when? When? What is this a next week scene? All the, all the, and if not, the what lingo. are we doing right now? It was like terrifying. Um, I, I I feel like it happens every time. I felt all those same ways. Like I don't understand where the camera is or what I should be doing. And I think all the stuff I did first. You see me looking to see where the little mark <laughs> on the floor is a lot. Um, but. Even after I had done some stuff, the day I was showing up for the first scene in The Avengers, and it was going to be this group of actors that I was in awe of, I was like, I'm afraid I'm not going to open my mouth and nothing's going to come out. (laughs) We're almost out of time, but I I want to... uh, film EO uh, is about putting the uh, I'm bringing our sponsor back into this is all about putting who's the sponsor again right exactly <laughs> is it film EO is it EO it's not IO it's film.io film.io the IO. website, website. they've provided wonderful it. snacks only here it was written on a cup right exactly if there was only a cup that we could <laughs> listen I, I really am grateful but film EO is, is and I'm reading this just to make sure I say it right is all about putting the power to green light films in the hand of creators to lean into that a little bit uh, can you each name someone who empowered you on a past project, someone who believed in you and put the creative power in you when when you didn't, really didn't expect to get it? Good question. Frosty lives. <laughs> you got to answer this, though, sir. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I'm like hundreds of names are rattling through my mind because I'm realizing that that my whole love of independent film and my experience with being an actor is just is just literally I'm not even being hyperbolic literally hundreds and hundreds of 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 people who are so willing and open to field every question and and go beyond I mean from and that's not just directors that's entire that's the entirety of the crew like I'm always quite amazed by by um how gracious every crew is in terms of illuminating you know exactly how they do something. If you go up and you say, "Wait a second, why is that this, this, and this?" and they tell you exactly. Um, uh, yeah, I'm thinking of a, I'm thinking of a great uh, sound designer that I worked with, uh, John Pritchett, who let me. Um, who maybe you've, you've, I love John yeah, Pritchett. He's an amazing, amazing person, and did so many of my favorite films. And I, I was doing a western in, in in New Mexico, and and he would let me sit in the sound truck with him and all of his guys, and would basically teach me. Um, uh, just beat by beat, how 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 is he recording five pieces of audio right now? Because the way that they had they set it up is he wanted this kind of documentary um, 
filmmaking so you're recording all these tracks at the same time and exactly how is he doing that how is he keeping that there and anyways i just i remember feeling like this is a master class um from one of you know our great sound designers so yeah he's done more amazing movies and this guy there's none of them i could even say <laughs> has the best stories of anybody in the business <laughs> The stuff he's heard over the little microphones oh that my. are on your body all day. Right. Oh, dear Lord. And he'll tell you. Um, <laughs> so much of the time, and this may sound naive, like you kind of feel like you're just, <laughs> we saw the Sasquatch movie last night. You're a little Sasquatch trying to get through the woods on your own. And when somebody take, says like, oh, no, I really love what you're doing. I really want to, I want you to come into this. It just gives you another 10 years of life, I think. It's just, mm -hmm. it's so empowering. I had an acting class in NYU and the two teachers were a, a, a young playwright named David Mamet and his main guy who just come to sh from Chicago with him, William H. Macy. And we studied together for a couple of years. We formed a theater company and then Mamet offered me my first bit role in a movie, which I was like, oh, he's backing it up. And then Mamet, I mean, Macy directed a play in New York, a one act on 42nd Street, and he gave me a, a nice part in that. And I went, wow, that's that's real. Well, I have to say my husband, Charles Kakatsakis, was a, an acting teacher, and we met acting in stock. And I was brought in to do the musicals. And <laughs> we became together, we, we lived together, and he he always said to me, you're, you're fine in musicals, you're great in musicals, but you really should be acting. And so he literally changed my life. I mean, he, he, uh, he made me do it. He made me learn how to work. And, and uh, so I, I was, this was the biggest thing ever happened in my life because I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now if it weren't for him. I definitely, Fred, have to ask you an individual question because I'm a big fan of Kyle Mooney, and um, I believe you're in Y2K, which is his next film. Or am I wrong about this? I, I don't want to break any news, but I I'm not because it's all, it was I was going to do a very funny cameo thing in that, but then um, you got like two or three other huge movies. No, no, <laughs> it just yeah. We could, wait, anyways, wait, did, but it's going to be great. Sure, I guess I'll switch to something else and just yeah. say. Because um, I know you can't talk about Gladiator and anything specific, but I'm going to ask. You're in Gladiator? <laughs> Just yeah. uh, One of the things, though, is you, you got to work with Ridley. And the thing that I find fascinating about Ridley is he works in such a different manner than other filmmakers because he shoots with six or eight cameras at all the, all the time. So you're like at lunch, you've shot your whatever you need to shoot, you know, and then he works very fast. So as an actor, what is it like working when you're shooting with six or eight cameras? And can you sort of talk about, you know, being making Gladiator with Ridley working in that such a different environment? It's amazing. I mean, the, the, the eight cameras reminds me of theater because you have an entire environment that's created in camera. And it's, but I have to say, what's amazing too is when something feels alive, it, it feels alive in, in unique but connected ways. So um, when something's really special, you know, what, what we're doing here, it's like when you, when you start to find a rhythm, I, I, I feel if again if i'm lucky i feel connected to that feeling of when i start doing plays and and what is that i can't even i could never have been able to put a name on whatever that weird feeling is but you just you just get a sense of it yeah. and like i hope they're getting this yeah 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 i hope they're rolling no that like that, that there's that there's something that you can't put your finger on that's within the moment of the moment in the moment and like you know we spend all this time hanging out and you know it's like First off, you make real friends, which is an amazing part. And then you also, within the scenes, you you find something that's just um, that that you cannot name, and and uh, all the intensity of of that set breeds that, and all the kind of gentleness of this one breeds that, and they all kind of. I always find that the process becomes the product, and so um, however it's designed is is built to 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 bring out and and nurture and kind of speak to. That story that he's trying to tell on that note i just want to say a sincere congratulations to all three of you for making such a fantastic film i know everyone's going to love it who sees it i wish you guys nothing but the best and i also want to give a huge thank you one last time to filmio for being our sponsor and supporting indie cinema at sundance look for more interviews thank you so much for having us and again thank you so much filmio for having us <laughs>
Yeah. Um, uh, thank you. And you guys have a fantastic Sundance. Thank you so much. Yeah. Always.